In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my favorite reptile YouTubers or reptubers, however you wanna say it. Welcome back to the office. We've gotta take a break between builds because they take quite a long time to put together and to get set up and do. So I can't just release a build video every single week unless I basically film like a year's worth beforehand because they take a bloody long time to edit. And because I'm still kind of new to this, a lot of the footage is useless. And alongside that, a lot of the audio is absolutely atrocious. Now, if I'm sounding different to what I've sounded in the past, that's just simply because I've got more experience on camera now. You've only seen three videos if you're watching along, but I've filmed quite a few now where I'm a lot more comfortable on camera now. I'm not a shy person by any means. It just took a little bit of time for me to get me eyes to stay on that lens. I've got to avoid the beautiful image on the right, but you're probably gonna be able to tell the videos that I filmed before this one versus the videos from this point on because my personality will come out a lot more, my attitude will come out a lot more. But then saying that, right now I'm sitting in an office with nothing else going on. When I'm building things, I gotta be aware of what I'm doing. I'm using power tools. I'm moving things that I can break and then have to create again, and that will really piss me off. So nevertheless, this is the actual me. Welcome on board. I hope you like me. Please like me. But anyway, I'm going to discuss, as I said at the beginning, I think, because as you can see, no scripting, as always. I mean, I don't even need this. Just go over there. You're ruining the little aesthetic of my set here. Now, this was an extremely difficult video to, I mean, I didn't script it, but to come up with the six names. And the reason for that is because there's so many bloody good channels out there. Like when I first kind of sat down, I did actually have a few notes, I've since erased it, but I started writing down, you know, all the reptile YouTubers that I know, that I watch, that I enjoy to watch, and the list became 5, 10, 15, 20. Then I ripped off the list and threw it away. It was causing me too much stress. So what I did instead was, uh, I thought this was a good idea at the time, was uh, I asked ChatGBT to give me a number between five and 10. I thought 10 is really the most that I could probably do. If I was to feature every reptile YouTube channel that I like on this list, the video would be like an hour or two. And let's be honest, no one's gonna watch that. So I had to come up with some kind of value. And I thought about throwing a dart at a dartboard, thought that's terrible. What if I hit the bullseye by chances? Now I'm gonna come up with 50? That would be challenging. I'd probably be here for a while. I might even get hungry. So I resorted to AI. I used ChatGBT, so give me a number between five and 10, it gave me six. Six, it didn't wanna put me like seven or eight, it just gave me bloody six. It might as well have just given me five. How many videos do you see that have top six in them? But rules are rules, even if they're self-imposed. So these are the six YouTube channels that I have watched probably the most of in the last five to 10 years. I do feel bad that I'm not gonna include more, but I have to stop the list somewhere. These are just the six that, I mean, I've just spent the most time with. Now these are in no particular order because yes, I am a coward. So we're gonna start off this list, the absolute OG, the absolute daddy of Reptile YouTube, Brian Barczyk. I don't think you can have a list of anything reptile YouTube and him not be in it. Unless it was about something negative, in which case I wouldn't put him in that. But he has to be included. He's from like the beginning. November 2013, that's just the Brian Barczyk channel. Like I watched this guy before this channel even existed. Like back when he was doing Snake Bites or Snake Bites TV, I'm not sure which one it is. But I remember watching that like, God, that must have been like 10 or 12 years ago now. And to be honest, Brian was really my first exposure to reptile keeping at a large scale from watching his YouTube content. Like I had no idea really at the time that that was even an option, but like, people even did that. Like I've watched hours of this guy's content. Back to the early days of his main channel, back to the creation of Reptarium 1, back to when uh, Noah and Eric used to get up to their antics, back when Chewy used to get up to his antics. I mean, I love the channel and they pump out a ton of content. Like I don't know how they pump out that amount of content at that kind of quality. Like generally you have two trains of thought. You have quality, you have quantity. He produces both. I don't really know how he does it. His content's solid, especially over the last three or four years. Now, I'll be completely honest. I don't watch as much of him now as I used to. You know, just life changes and I don't have as much free time to dedicate to as many videos as he puts out. It's just not really possible for me now, which is a shame because I would love to watch as much content as I can because I get to learn from it. I get to see the visuals from it. And it's entertaining, of course. So even though I don't watch him as much as I used to, he's still the original. Like he's still, in my eyes, the original, the starter of it, and really the one that kind of inspired me to want to keep reptiles. Because before him, I didn't even really know it was possible. So next on the list is Clint's Reptiles, the Mr. Rogers of the reptile industry, or at least that's how I perceive him. Now, I remember watching one of his first videos he ever posted because I got served the video by YouTube. 
I watched it, I enjoyed it. And then I went to his channel to see what he was about. And he didn't have a lot of content available at the time. I cannot remember how many videos it was. Like it wasn't a lot, it was probably around 10 or 15. And I've been watching his channel pretty much ever since that point. I mean, I watched this Fraud Lizard video a little bit before I got Gizmo. I believe he rated the Fraud Lizard at like 2.6. Which at the time I thought, oh, that's a little concerning. I I was expecting them to be a lot better. I took the Frilled Lizard video where he rated the Frilled Lizard 2.6 as more of a warning. Like I went, oh, I thought this animal was way easier than this. So his video prompted me to do an absolute crap ton of research to the point where when I was ready to get a Frilled Lizard, you could have asked me any question, I'd have known the answer. It didn't matter what the question was. So his video provided me with enough information for me to decide if it was a pet that I would even be interested in, which is what I think his ratings are mainly for. He puts the rating out there to say, is this something that you could do? Because it's not the animal at the end of the day that determines if it's gonna do well or not, it's the keeper. So he's more or less showing you this is what you need to be aware of if you're getting into this animal, whether it's a corn snake or whether it's a green iguana. And I really like it when he's reviewing an animal, which is obviously a terrible pet. And he knows that. Pretty much the first thing he says is, is this a good pet? Absolutely not. Like he just starts off the video that way and I just think that's really cool. Now putting his rating videos aside and you can look at some of the other things he does, like I don't really watch his rating videos because unless it's an animal I'm really looking into getting, I don't put a lot of time into looking up if it's a good pet or not. Like the videos I mainly enjoy from his channel are Dinosaur Decembers, I love that, and the genetics videos where he's kind of showing how things are related to each other. I mean, I went to university for biology and I've learned more from his videos than I learned in that bloody degree. Every video of his that I watch, I learn something though. Clint's great, I love the channel. One thing I will say about Clint though, and this is not a dick, this is more of a comedy thing, I just need to explain that so it doesn't get taken the wrong way, but man, does he love that Ridge Wallet. So next on the list here is Snake Discovery. Like I've never met them, but they just seem like really nice, down-to-earth people that just really love what they do. And it comes out, it really shines through in all their content. I mean, if you're ever having a bad day, just watch some of their videos, you'll poke up immediately. I mean, in fairness, the Snake Discovery YouTube channel is probably just as good as Google when it comes to having a question. You can pretty much type in whatever reptile-based question, and they probably have a video on it. They provide a lot of educational content, super entertaining. They're both super passionate. Emily and... I mean, I've forgotten his name. I mean, Emily's in 99% of these videos. I mean, come on, it's not really fair. I mean, I know she's Emily, but I'm really irritated at the moment that I've forgotten his name. As soon as I turn that camera off, his name will come to me. And that will piss me off even more. I mean, all three of these channels I've listed so far, Brian Barchat, Clint's Reptiles, and Snake Discovery, they all have facilities. So not only can you watch their content on like YouTube and social media, but you can actually go to their facility and you can meet them, which is super cool. And that's what I really love about the industry. All the people in that peak level of popularity are available for the community and they provide a lot of value to the community. I definitely will be visiting all three of those locations at some point in the future. Now I'm gonna throw this list off a little bit with this next entry here. I said this was a list of the six reptile channels that I enjoy the most. This isn't a reptile channel, it's the Dark Den. I mean, he has a couple of reptiles and I did make this list and have complete authority. This is not a democracy by any means. I mean, he's mainly got arachnids and spiders and things like that, but he does have a few reptiles. So because of that, he gets to go on the list and it is also my list and you can't stop me. I mean, all four of these channels so far provide value to me differently. As a content consumer, I've spent more time with the Dark Den channel. Like I've been a subscriber of this guy's channel since he had about 2000 subs. Like I think it was like 1.8 when a video of his first got served to me. And if you're familiar with his channel, I really just like the narrative and it just naturally flowed that way. I don't know how many animals he had at the time, maybe 20 or 30, maybe less, just in shelves and it's progressed over the years of his channel's existence to where they're taking up his entire basement now. I mean, if that isn't an addiction, Petco, I don't know what is. That does pretty much sum up the reptile hobby as a whole, though. I mean, it starts with one, and then we start building up from there. We just keep increasing the side of the collection until it pretty much just fills up our entire homes. Eventually, you're just forced to sleep in the corner in a sleeping bag. He's another one that's just really down to earth. Like, I've seen the channel grow, so I kind of feel like I've been a bit more involved with his channel. Obviously, I have no involvement. I've never met the man. So his channel's a little bit more nostalgic to me almost. So I love this guy's channel. I've been subscribed for years. I'd love to meet him one day, but he's in Croatia. So I imagine that one will probably never happen. But if you're watching Petco, I love your content, man. Next up, Chandler's Wildlife. I mean, this guy's a bloody legend as far as I'm concerned. He's insane, like completely bonkers. Whatever biological programming humans have to avoid danger, his doesn't work or it's backwards. He's got balls of steel, this guy. And like when I say he's insane, I mean that as a compliment. I mean, no offense to the guy at all. Like he's on my list of top six channels for a reason. 
I really enjoy his content. I have a tremendous amount of respect for him. I'm just terrified and could never do it. Like the way he responds to the animals, the way he reads the animals, you can just sense that there's more going on in that guy's head than there is when I do the same thing. Like he sees something that I obviously just am oblivious to. It's almost like the matrix effect. Like I look at a snake, see a snake. He looks at a snake, sees a bunch of moving lines and knows everything about that snake exactly how it's going to respond. Like I imagine he sees in like matrix code. Like he looks at a king cobra and just sees all these lines of information. Sees so much more in that animal. Whereas when I look at that king cobra, all I see is death and I know not to get any closer. But what he does with his animals is crazy, crazy impressive. And I think the main reason why I enjoy his channel is just because I will never have the skill set or the understanding of the animals that he has. Like, I couldn't say anything negative about him. I said the word insane just to be kind of funny, you know, chew to. When I'm meeting people that are scared of reptiles, this is the channel I show them because he's handling animals that are terrifying and some of them have a very big negative image about them. I show them videos of him handling Kevin the King Cobra. How can you realistically be scared of snakes and put them kind of on this demon pedestal when he's able to do what he does. Like, I'm not saying everybody should do it or can do it. I definitely can't do that. I just feel like it's a really good image to be like, this is the most deadly, dangerous, bad named animal we have, and it's fine with somebody who knows what they're doing. I mean, he says in every video that he does that these are not good pets. He's showcasing them so we can learn about them, which that's how I view his channel. Like, I'm not gonna own most of this stuff, but I would like a resource to be able to see it to be able to see someone interact with it, be able to learn from it. So I like having a resource that I can actually go and see these animals. Like I'd love to meet him one day. I know he does have a facility, so I potentially could actually meet this guy. I mean, if I pick this guy's brain, I could probably get enough content to write more words than JK Rowling has. Now I called him insane at the beginning of this entry. He's not insane, I don't mean it negatively. I mean it with the utmost respect. I love this channel, I love the content. I have rules when it comes to keeping pets and I plan on doing a video in the future going over those rules. Rule one, the animal must not be able to kill me. Pretty much everything he owns could kill me. So based on my rule one of, his, of reptile keeping, he's off his rocker. Like everything could kill him, but that's why he's valuable. Not because it could kill him, but because someone has them, has his skill set, has his understanding of these animals, a priceless value to the industry. Chandler, if you're watching, I love your content, brother. Please don't take offense to me calling you insane. I mean it with the utmost respect. I'm a coward. So compared to me, you're insane. <laughs> Lastly, Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. I mean, he has the best name channel out of all of these for sure. Like Adam's the reason I even started the YouTube channel to begin with. And I mean, he's a relatively newcomer to the reptile YouTube space, at least compared to some of these other channels anyway. I have watched so many of his top five lists at this point, where it's really making me question the amount of time I spend on the platform. Like, I feel like I should throw an amphibian only channel into this list, just, you know, just because. But I don't actually know any of those, so that makes it difficult. Post your favorite creator down below in the comments. I'd love to see some names that I've never heard of. And if you know any amphibian only channels, post that down below so I can feature that in my next video. I mean, I've actually seen this guy in real life. At the Toronto Reptile Expo, which is the closest one to me, I saw him doing some filming and I didn't want to bother him. Plus I assume he gets approached by an absolute crud ton of people. So I just didn't want to add to that. But that's really why I love this hobby is like you've got all the social media present, like you see all their content, but they're real people that you can actually see. Like they're not hidden. They actually go out to reptile functions and to expos and to events and things like that. It makes them more real. And that's what I think is really cool about the reptile hobby itself. We all have a passion for the same thing. Like our passions may run us in different ways, but we're all so close knit. I mean, there's a little bit of YouTube drama, of course, but I don't follow that crap. Oh man. I just feel bad, like there's so many great YouTube channels that like, I'm missing. But because I've imposed this rule of only doing six, the list is just insane how many great creators there are within this industry. But I gotta leave it at six because I'll just end up filming something that's like three hours long and then no one's gonna watch that. In next week's video, we're gonna be building Gizmo's girlfriend's an enclosure. Not modifying an enclosure like we did for Gizmo, actually building it. And yes, I said girlfriends, plural with an S.